Hi, in this video I want to talk about the differences between the blur and the defocus node and in the next video I'll talk in details about the Z or Z defocus node. These two nodes do something similar and the difference might not seem very obvious at first but they have different uses. Let's start with the blur node, it's the simplest of all the blur operations in Nuke. It's also the less expensive to run, doesn't need as much processing power as other ones. The blur is a simple node, we have very few options so the way things work, if we just zoom in as you enter a value, let's just look at let's say this pixel. If I enter a value of one, it's gonna take my pixel and mix it with every direct neighbor pixel. If I enter a value of two, it's gonna start mixing with two pixels away and you get blurry and blurry as you go up, mixing with three pixels in each direction and so on. So that's how it works, very simple. Now you can split the size slider as you can usually do in Nuke. And if we go something high, we could just split it in the width and have something like this, like a very cheap motion blur. And that's mostly it. The rest is very standard nuke stuff, your channels, your mask, your mix. You can sometimes play with the mix and get some interesting effect. If you work with lens distortion, you probably want to uncheck the crop to format to keep your bounding box. And that's pretty much all there is about this node. Most of the time I use the blur node to soften matte elements and roto or to slightly blur something, but it's not the best choice if you work with the beauty of the CG render like here, a plate, a live action element. For the nicer effect on an image and something more realistic, the defocus is a much better choice. Defocus is different than blur since it emulates the way an out of focus image will look through a lens. It's slower to run than the blur, but it looks a lot better. Okay, so if we just enter a value of 18 in both our blur and Defocus, you can see a lot more is going on on the defocus here. And just like with a real lens, brighter areas are more visible and they become circles. And that's what we call bokeh. I'll get into more details about that on my next video about the Z defocus node. But just to give you one example, it's what you would see in an out of focus footage of a city at night, where each light source becomes a big blurry circle. So with the defocus, you can separate the width and height like you could in the blur. You had that splitter here but you can change the aspect ratio. This is very useful when working on films shot with an anamorphic lens, which will change the shape of the bokeh from a round circle to an elongated oval shape. You can do this by entering a value of 0.5 here, and I will give you that same effect as an anamorphic lens. The scaling slider is not very useful. It's just a multiplier of the focus and ratio together. I don't think I've never played with quality. You could make it higher, but usually the default is fine. And full precision, again, in some case you might switch to that, but usually I get very nice results leaving it as is. The focus is not of choice when working on live action plates to the elements like environments, anything that doesn't have a depth pass. If you have a depth pass, you want to use the Z defocus node, and that is the subject of my next video. Thank you for watching and comment below if you have any questions. I also want to point out that all my videos are also available in written version on my blog. You can have the link in the description below. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.